I come out here in 1954, December 1, 1954. And I come out here to work and uh, find me a job and go to work. Three days later, I had me a truck driving job. All the way at it and into construction uh, all my life. I've seen five joints of 24 inch pipe on a trailer loaded and ready to go up the hill the next morning to the pipe site. We got out there that morning, out of lost camp, went up to the trailer. The trailer was tipped over into the creek. Each one of those joints of pipe, 24 inch, 20 feet long, would weigh between six, 700 pound, maybe 800 pound a piece. And he picked up all five of them and just tipped the whole trailer right over in the creek. We had to go up and move a cat down to bring the trailer up and the pipe up so we could take it on up to the site. There was tracks there, Bigfoot tracks there. And some of the guys said, oh, I said, you and Shorty and them made them tracks and stuff like that. I, I said, you look like me, like you're the biggest fool in the county. You think I could pick a, a trailer up? It's got 60, uh, two or 3,000 pounds on it and turn it over in the creek. I said, you're crazy. I said, three or four of us couldn't do it. We couldn't do that. I said, well, we, we just kind of had an idea. I said, well, you can get it out of your brains right now because it ain't working. It don't, it don't work, it don't, don't be there. It's not there. Anyway, uh, we went ahead and loaded the pipe up, yard the trailer out, load the pipe back up, and uh, took her on up on the job and put her uh, put her in the ground underneath the road. That was the uh, now right there, right where I seen that there. That happened there. At that time, I seen a dog that had tracks. And them, them, uh, some hunters went up there and turned their hounds loose on this. When they turned their hounds loose on it, one of the dogs got killed. There was some bite marks on it, but more or less twisted and torn to. Showed half of it off to the side and the other half the other, the other way. I seen that and I, Ray Kerr was there with me and he said, you know, Jay, said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. What's that? He said, I'm going right straight back to camp. Well, what's for? We're going to work. I'm going right straight back to camp. I'm loading my rig and I'm getting, I'm getting out of here. I'm not coming back. You quitting? I said, you, are you scared of that? Well, yes, I'm scared of it and I'm leaving. He left. I never seen him since. I was scared of it, but you know, what are you looking at something other? You know, it's already happened, already done, and it's daylight and everything, and everything looks good. What are you going to do? <laughs> You're going to start running, running to where? But anyway, I went ahead and got everything squared away. Mm -hmm. That night, the first night out there, next morning, I figured my partner, Bill Lewis, would be back in with a load of fuel. Well, he didn't show up. I went ahead and worked the biggest part of that day. And then it come down to the point where I had to get out of there. Now, I slept out there underneath that cat that night. Underneath it. The next, and, uh, I leaned it down the hill. You don't, don't want to lay flat on the ground. You want to lean down a little bit so you don't slide. And I leveled it up to where, with my blade, to what I wanted. And everything was good. And I had a little transistor radio about that long. I still got it. I can present it to you. 
I use that transistor radio, I turn it on when I go to sleep, and it makes a noise. And I figure whatever's around, they ain't gonna like that music or whatever, and I'd listen to a radio station in Eureka, okay? And uh, down someplace in there and stuff like that. Next morning I got up from here to you, Bigfoot tracks was all around my head. I mean, buddy, Bigfoot tracks was all around there. All around that cat, within three feet, three to four feet from me. So, if he had some kind of grudge against me, I wouldn't be here.